Hello, my name is Caddy Januzzi and I'm here again this week to interview another UVM student. Um, her name is Grace Parker and she just joined now. And again, we're not expecting too many viewers on the live itself, um, but it's more for keeping the live on the Instagram page to continue to raise awareness is awareness for uh, CCTV, Town Meeting TV, and the importance of it. So I'm going to, I always struggle doing this. Hang on. Okay. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. You as well. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, of course. You know, we're going to talk about some really cool stuff. I think you've done some awesome stuff. So, <laughs> all right. So do you want to just start off by introducing yourself? Yeah. So, um, like you said, my name is Grace. I am um, from Jackson, Wyoming. I am a senior here at UVM majoring in political science. Um, I'm on the pre-law track and have done some uh, research at a law firm in Burlington and some other things like that. Yeah. Awesome. What law firm did you do research? Um, Payne Law. It's actually based out of um, Plattsburgh right on the other side of the lake, but she only works with like UVM interns. Which That's cool. really, yeah, I was going to ask about what your major was because, um, you know, the, the girl that I interviewed last week, mm -hmm. um, she was, I believe she was a, a studio art major or something. And that really interested me because I was, you know, I was assuming that, you know, the people who get really involved with like local politics and, you know, town policy and everything like I would assume that they would be more you know politically inclined in their major you mm -hmm. know but it was interesting to know that you know it's just something that you can be passionate about without having it be like you know something you're studying so yeah know. totally yeah all right so tell me about your political experiences you know and your their experiences of how you've gotten involved in the town mm -hmm. of Berlin. yeah um I guess that would really start my first, my second year on campus is when I got more involved with in, um, volunteering on various campaigns and stuff. I've always been kind of politically active um, growing up at home and um, in my hometown. And then I got involved with College Democrats my sophomore year through friends and then was asked to volunteer on Richard Dean's um, city council campaign that year. And then with that same group of people um, volunteered on a couple other uh, state Senate campaigns and then um, Burlington city council campaigns as well. Wow. So how many total campaigns do you think you've been a part of? Um, I would say maybe five or six campaigns. Nice. It's awesome. Can you tell me about what you do when you're involved? Like how, how you specifically got involved in them? Yeah, a lot of the work I've done um, when we were in person was doing like canvassing in the Burlington area, phone banking. And then now when we did our the most recent campaign I was involved in, um, it was always fully remote because of mm -hmm. the pandemic, obviously. So that was doing a lot of like phone banking, honking waves, just really trying to connect with um, voters and get them like engaged and excited and also informed mm -hmm. that, you know, there were elections coming up and things that they should be involved in. Yeah. <laughs> So that's really, really interesting. So how do you get the reliable information about what's happening with local issues? Is it harder or easier to get this than it is national political issues? Or? I definitely, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I definitely think that we, a lot of what is easily accessible is going to be the big national um, issues when it comes to politics, because that gets a lot more coverage. So for folks that aren't really looking into specific local issues and they just go to the news or whatever it is that they get their information from, they're gonna find the larger stuff. Something that I do to stay um, engaged with like local stuff, following um, like hashtag VT Polly on Twitter or hashtag BTV Polly, just to like see what issues people are actively talking about. Um, but then also looking at the different newspapers in Burlington and kind of knowing who writes about the different issues to stay up to what is being um, talked about and decided in the area. So what are some issues that you specifically care about as a Burlington local? Um, I think right now, some of the big issues that I've seen in the last couple of years that 
I um, am pretty passionate about is um, I have followed some stuff through the state house about um, buprenorphine buprenorphine oh my gosh sorry legalization and also um getting like safe needle zones in the area and just like helping with that because we've seen how hard vermont has been hit by the opioid epidemic um i think there's been a lot of really interesting dialogue in local politics regarding race and race relations in burlington and that's something i've been following and just trying to stay up on um but also i think a big thing in burlington politics is in like people feeling excluded or like a a uh, the ability to um, like engage and become a part of it. So that's something I've also been kind of following. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. I actually, um, I know how hard obviously Burlington's been hit with the opioid ep epidemic and, you know, knowing that people are interested in doing something about that is, you know, for some reason I don't hear too much about activism surrounding that, you know, these days so knowing that there is stuff going on you know to support mm -hmm. that is obviously really reassuring and good to know <laughs> so um when it comes to the coverage of political issues via news outlets what's more important in your opinion factually reliable coverage or coverage that resonates with one's individual ideologies so should it be super accurate or should it be kind of more tending to what they think the audience wants to hear. I mean, it, yeah, I, I think it should be more, like as factually accurate as possible. And I think that's hard because every news source is going to have or every writer is going to have some bias when they're covering something. Um, and it's also hard because people are going to search out coverage of an issue that they agree with. Like we're always going to kind of find something that confirms your own implicit bias. Um, but I think it's more important to have accurate stuff and stuff that aligns with your own ideology. Right. I think it's interesting to think about how, you know, naturally you're going to, you know, resonate more with and, you know, seek out more news sources that align with your political, you know, personal ideologies. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, the difference between like Fox News and CNN, like, you know, if you're more conservative and you're looking for news that resonates more along the conservative lines, like you're probably going to go to Fox News instead of CNN and vice versa, you know? Right. So there's like an interesting line there, I think, of, you know, searching for something that resonates with you while maintaining the accuracy. Yeah, exactly. Like our confirmation bias is so deeply ingrained that you don't necessarily realize yeah, exactly. that you're doing it. Um, I took a course through the political science department looking at the political effects of entertainment media and it's kind of along the same things with news media and entertainment media we're going to continue to find things and tend to like things that are going to confirm that um yeah so there's yeah really interesting stuff it's really there. interesting yeah the science behind it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so my next question is what are some strategies that news outlets can use in order to reduce their own political biases Ooh. um I mean, I, I think it's just important to look at the facts as they're presented when researching or reporting on something. So just, you know, even if you maybe disagree with what you're reporting on, uh, you know, still giving it a fair look at that. Um, and also just, I think, being so aware of your own bias when reporting on something and like taking that into account um, is really important to make sure that maybe it's not so biased. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. So, sorry, I have my questions written out You're here. You're so fine. <laughs> Kim and I are, like, you know, coming together to write a bunch of questions, and there's actually a lot more than actually the what we sent you, so I'm not trying to just, okay. like, <laughs> show, like, just jump at you with, like, all these different questions. But, um, so, what would be the local impact of politics if voter turnout was higher, do you think? Um, I mean, I think you would, there's a lot of criticism, I feel like, that politicians get from the public just being um, like feeling like they disagree with policies that happen. And I think if voter turnout was higher, you would see maybe less criticism. You would see more, I think you, they would still get criticized, but I think people would maybe have a better understanding or feel like more trust within um, those that are elected because they're engaged in the process. Um, and voter turnout, I think obviously would change who gets elected. Um, you know, in many different ways. Yeah. Is there a specific demographic that you would 
you know, like to see as a, someone who is politically involved, politically active, that you would like to see turn out more when it comes to voting? I mean, I, I think it's interesting in Burlington, just, you know, having worked in like the student wards on campus and during our campaigns that I've been involved in, that mm -hmm. turnout fluctuates so much, like, in general, but, you know, the student vote is obviously important to get and to increase because they, their voice still matters. And I think that there's been a lot happening to engage students in the last couple of years. Just overall, I think there's a lot of people that um, aren't engaged in the political process that yeah. could be, you know, it's just all, all the demographics, I think, should yeah. just engage more, but. <laughs> yeah, it is really interesting that, um, you know, when I was talking with Margot last week, um, I don't know if you saw the interview that I'd had with her, it was something like very similar to this. Mm -hmm. um, she was saying that, you know, people in the Burlington area, like the students in the Burlington area, like even if they're, you know, not necessarily like from Vermont, they're still a part of the community and they're, you know, whatever they vote for or don't vote for affects them directly as well. So I yeah. think it's you know, interesting that, you know, maybe students don't automatically think that they're, you know, going to be super impacted by the local politics and policies and everything that's going on in the town that they go to school in because it's not their you know where they're born and raised and grown up or whatever but you know it's still obviously really important for the college demographic definitely right and it's hard i the hardest thing i think with that is convincing students that yeah. it does impact them because a yeah. lot of times i'll have conversations with friends or with potential voters and we'll be talking about it they're like but it doesn't impact me it's like no but it does and trying <laughs> to explain that to them is always a interesting yeah. conversation um yeah, yeah. especially when students are like oh well i'm only here for like eight months i'm like well the other four months when you're at home how does that yeah. have a bigger impact on you yeah it's true <laughs> yeah it's true it's been, like as students we spent we're spending the majority of our time like here you know mm -hmm. it's so weird to think that like i've lived here now for four years and it's like yeah it's become absolutely a part like whatever happens in the town affects me you know even if I don't realize it yeah so, absolutely yeah so um what are the disadvantages of the media like on the projects that you've been working on the campaigns that you've worked on um you know anything like I think it's hard because like any cover you know they say like any coverage is good coverage and like you want to get exposure on different things um in terms of like disadvantages of the media I mean sometimes it can be really hard because you know you know one side of an issue or a topic because you're involved in it and then the media only knows maybe a different side and that if that's what gets published or put out there that can be really frustrating because you don't want to be like well it's wrong you know yeah sometimes knowing when you're involved in politics and like knowing that more nuances or backstory to situations can be frustrating with mm -hmm. um, the media at times. But I don't know, I just think it's important to maintain positive relationships with the media and just mm -hmm. stay involved in that way. And yeah, definitely. So um, I'm just thinking what what media sources have, you know, pro provided you or the campaigns that you've worked on with like, you know, some positive advantages, you know, throughout your campaigning process? Yeah, I think um, the various campaigns I've been involved in have had really good relationships with, like, VT Digger and just, like, some of the local papers, Seven Days and stuff, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, reaching out on both sides, um, you know, reaching out to them and them to the campaigns and just staying engaged and whatnot, yeah. Nice. So, um, this is, these are the questions that, like, you know, you didn't get originally. <laughs> Um, so do you have any plans for the future? Like, are you going to be staying in Burlington? Are you going to continue working, getting involved in the community? Yeah, um, I am, as of right now, unsure exactly where I'll, what I'll be doing after graduation. Still kind of figuring all of that out. But long term, I am studying for the LSAT with um, intention of going to law school. So definitely still staying involved in some aspect of politics. And, you know, I'll always... I'll always be involved on some level because I thought it's important. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, have you heard of CCTV throughout your Yes, day? I Oh, sorry. <laughs> things are popping up. Yeah, I have heard of um, CCTV. Yeah. yeah. So from your opinion, how do you think CCTV benefits the community, town meeting TV? Like, you know, how do you think it benefits the community or the work that you're doing in your campaign? Yeah, I mean, I think anything that 
makes access to um, local politics easier is a huge benefit. Um, and especially, you know, doing things like this and having um, coverage that's accessible to students is really important. Um, because it's, it, you're not going to have students that are always going to like, go down and like watch city council meetings or log into um, like, uh, broadcasts of it. So having things that are more accessible is definitely important. Yeah, that's what we're gonna try to be doing because on the on the YouTube channel, the CCTV YouTube channel mm -hmm. there, they do lives kind of like how they would do on Instagram, like they do mm -hmm. lives for the meetings. And so we were gonna try to take the content from the YouTube, like download it and post it onto the Instagram. That way people have, you know, like one resource. Yeah. <laughs> able to watch it because it's not you're not always going to be able to tune in and also a lot of college kids don't have like you know cable like that so right it's hard to you know be exposed to that at a certain point so that's what we're trying to do here is just make it more accessible and interesting for college kids definitely well I really appreciate you talking with me you have obviously so much going on and <laughs> I know that you've done you know so much for the town of Burlington and we'll continue to do that you know well into your years after you graduate and good luck with everything that you're doing good luck with law school the LSAT <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah I really appreciate it and it's cool of you if I save this live to the Instagram yeah of course okay all right everyone give awesome. a give a great thank you <laughs> to Grace for being here so thank you so much for having me yeah thank you again for being here we really appreciate it